大家好, I'm Nathan Rich, aka Huoguodawang. This is the second part of a two-part video series. Last time I told you how I found the bottom of life. I grew up in Hollywood with my mother and two cats, but I was sent to the abusive Scientology boarding school called the MK Ranch for a total of four years. I had only finished two grades in my entire life, seventh and eighth. And when I was 17, I was finally out of the ranch, but my family disconnected from me permanently for not wanting to be part of their cult. This time, I'm going to tell you how I went from a depressed nobody with nothing to a successful and relatively happy and functional guy. This is the story of how I went from having nothing to having abundance. But I can give you a spoiler right now. It was hard. It took massive amounts of sacrifice and hard work. So there I was in Washington, with nothing but emotional pain. I struggled to stay alive, and I got into all kinds of trouble. I slept under bridges and in fields, anywhere I could. I was always deep in my own mind, trying to wrestle with the ideas of reality. What is life? Who am I? Why has my life gone this way? I was struggling to de-indoctrinate my own mind. Depressed and unmotivated, the reality of life was too harsh to confront. I turned inward and began a long process of suicide by partying, recklessness, and insanity. I had no future and no hope. I hitchhiked around the United States, wandering aimlessly and without purpose. Years later, when I was tired of my life and existence, I had been going down the spiral of suicide for so long, and yet somehow I was still alive. Several of my friends had died along the way, and I didn't really care if I was next. But something felt different. I wanted to do something else for the first time in many years. I was living in a sewage tunnel at this time a recluse away from society. All I had were some punk rock drinking buddies and a life of pain. I went to a house party I found out about and I complained to a friend of mine. I said, I don't know what it is, man. It's like, I can already tell what everyone's gonna do. I've been to so many parties and I've been doing this for so long, it's all predictable. I'm bored, I wanna do something, I just don't know what. He suggested something to me, quite casually. It was something that should have seemed stupid. He said, well, you're good at doing computers, why don't you do that? Why don't you do computers? Being good at computers to these people meant I knew how to download music. Like Michael Jackson and his snake dance that I talk about in another video, I found inspiration in the suggestion. Not only did I not brush it off, I made it the most important thing anyone had ever said to me. I'm going to do computers, I thought. I returned to my sewage tunnel on the outskirts of town and let the idea rest in my mind. I had no job history, no skills, and an eighth grade education at best. I had no ID card, passport, driver's license, social security card, or birth certificate. I had homemade tattoos in visible places. I had no money and no friends with money. I had no family. I had no support structure. In short, I had nothing. So how the hell was I going to do computers? Over the next few months, I made small steps towards the goal of doing computers. I borrowed money from a nice lady to order my birth certificate. I begged and negotiated several times to get my social security card from the government. I went to the local college day after day to try to find any way that I could get in. After eventually getting an ID card, I started working temporary manual labor jobs. Through a friend of mine, I was able to get my first real job working at Wendy's, a fast food restaurant. I wanted to go to college. I wanted to learn. I finally was able to figure out how to move forward with education. I needed to take out student loans and a grant from the government for impoverished people. But in order to do that, I need to get information from my mother. I used the internet to find her telephone number and I called her for help. It was the first time I had spoken to her in years. She refused to help me though and she made it clear that she was disappointed to hear from me and never wanted to hear from me again. I finally did get into that college without her help and with the stability of my new job, my life was improving. I had finally gotten an apartment but I didn't have much, just some clothes and an old motorcycle I bought from a friend. Unfortunately, after only two months of college, I got into a motorcycle accident which was the other person's fault. My shoulder was torn from its socket and my wrist was shattered. I couldn't write anymore and I had to drop out of school. After multiple surgeries and six long months of physical therapy, I finally regained the use of my right hand. I didn't give up. I moved back up to Washington and enrolled in a new college there in the only technical program they had, network technician they called it, but I soon found out the class was a joke. It was more of an introduction to computers, what DOS is, how CD-ROMs work, what YouTube is, typing, the basics of using a computer. After so much effort and such a long path to do computers, I wasn't satisfied. I couldn't give up. 
I spoke with the teachers and they agreed to a special arrangement. We want a Linux bind DNS server, they said. We don't know exactly what that is, but we want you to build it for us. They told me if I kept up with the curriculum, they would provide me with servers, workstations, books, and time. Anything I needed to learn Linux and build it for them. And so I taught myself Gen 2 Linux, and then other kinds of Linux, networking and more. I stopped partying and let my mohawk down. I got my tattoos covered up and stopped dressing so punk. I dedicated my whole existence to one single purpose, learn computers. I was going to do computers no matter what life threw at me. Nothing can stop a man who is inspired. I rode a bicycle to work every day and stayed as late as I could. At home, I spent all my waking moments in front of the computer. No more social life, no more anything, only knowledge. By the time I finished that college, I knew quite a bit about Linux and other technologies, so I applied for a real computer job and I got it. There, I taught myself even more for the job programming, automation, hardware, and more. I was expanding rapidly. After a while though, the company laid me off, so I decided to move down to Los Angeles, my hometown that I barely even knew as an adult. When I got there, I took another job, this time at a managed web hosting company. For years, I worked in a tight team of high-level systems administrators. I learned and eventually mastered all of the hundreds of nerd technologies that I came across in that job. And by the time I left, I was the most senior systems architect there. I had led or taken part in major projects for Gatorade, Verizon, Nissan, Miss Universe, the Oscars, the Grammys, and many, many more. I started traveling too, the Bahamas, Europe, Asia. Because I had gotten so used to not having anything, I never really needed anything fancy. Simple apartments, some clothes, and transportation was enough for me. With the excess money I earned rather than party it away or waste it on luxury items, I taught myself how to invest in stocks and started playing the stock market. I became disciplined and deliberate about my money and spending. I kept tight records of all of my expenditures and began making spending plans and budgets. I took another job in the major motion picture visual effects industry as systems and network administrator. We worked on movies like Thor, Captain America, The Green Hornet with J. Cho, and more. By this time, I was a real expert in systems, network, and basically anything computer related. I had done more to be in that position than anyone I ever knew, so I didn't take it for granted. I revolutionized several critical parts of their workflow and was headhunted by a VFX producer and VFX supervisor to come work as director of technology at their new startup company. They offered me all the perks in the world, part ownership of the company, work fully from home, high salary, and complete control over all the technical decisions of the company. While I was working there, I got a call informing me that my mother was dying. I was not allowed to see her or talk to her, and she died just a couple of weeks later from cancer. I was never able to reconcile with her in any way. The way our relationship was when she passed was one of my biggest regrets in life. I carried on and focused on building wealth in the form of experience. I never focused directly on money, but rather on what money could bring. I continued working and investing and looking for business opportunities. I learned a lot of valuable lessons along the way and made plenty of mistakes, but I never let those control me. Over time, my assets accrued and before I knew it, I had reached a milestone, a million dollars. The company I was working at had been in negotiations with a small Chinese visual effects company in Dujiang Yan. I was sent out to Du Jiangyan to do an assessment of the technical feasibility of a merger. I had already been to dozens of countries by the time I came to China, and I had no real expectations for it. I didn't really care one way or the other about China, to be honest. But once I arrived, something in me started to change. I fell in love with the country for all the right reasons. The people, the culture, the experience, the wonder, the language, the whole environment. I made a bold decision. I left all of America behind and decided not to work anymore. I didn't need the money and I felt like I had achieved my goals of doing computers. I decided to explore Asia and retire to China. I traveled around Asia to every country I could think of. I liked most of them, but only China kept calling me back. I either wanted to learn the language or get a job to learn what it's like to work with Chinese people. I wanted to really know them. I moved officially to China and returned to what I had already mastered, a job in computers at a visual effects company. We worked on many, many films, and though I didn't learn much about technology there, I learned everything I could about the Chinese people around me. The richest people I know are founders of companies. They made their wealth by innovation, risk, and hard work. 
I made my money by working tirelessly, saving and investing. You see the common theme? It takes work. It takes money management rather than random spending. It takes dedication and discipline, but not much else to be honest with you. And for God's sake, if I can do it, anyone can. So get out there and work, save, invest if you're comfortable, start a business if you have an idea, or partner with someone who does have an idea. Hustle, get a move on, get things going. Because the hardest lesson I ever learned is that honestly, everything I want to achieve, I need to earn myself. My whole life I've always been honest about who I am and where I come from, and I've found that honesty is what strengthens bonds and friendships. Every one of my friends and close colleagues knows that I didn't have an easy time in life, but they have the class to view me as I am now, rather than how I was as a kid. Some of my closest friends now are the very same owners of companies that I worked at, colleagues and people that I met along the way. There will always be people out there who disagree with what I say. They will try to make me sound like some crazy weirdo or do anything that they can to smear me. But when I went on American television to expose the abuses of the boarding schools, and when I wrote a book covering every detail of my story, and when I talk about the real China to the world, I hope you can see that I'm not just the sum of my past. My story is one of evolution. Those who only see my life as it was almost 20 years ago will never understand who I really am. And those people are no better than the evil Scientologists in the first place. So that's how I became a successful person against all odds, by hard work, dedication, and discipline. That's my story. What's yours? Thanks everybody.